Good morning. Well, I hope you are ready for a great day of Bible study and worship uh, this Sunday. And uh, get your Bibles out. Get yourself something to drink as we get started on this new uh, section about the return of Jesus Christ. In fact, the writer calls this whole passage here returning. It's in Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. Now, for us uh, in, in our society today, even in any society, I guess, uh, waiting is one of those things that you and I have a hard time dealing with, don't we? I mean, you think about it. Um, what are some examples of waiting? It doesn't take long to come up with those, does it? Um, how about at the bank teller? And you have four people in front of you. Especially the person with change. <laughs> what about the uh, drugstore line? And you either go around to the drive through and there's four cars in the line, and you go inside, and there's seven people in line. <laughs> or you get ready to check out at the grocery store. And you look, and there's only one line open, and it's already got three people deep in it. What are those feelings? Why do you think waiting causes us such anxiousness? <laughs> well, how about on the other hand, that when can you think of a time that waiting causes excitement and anticipation? Well, I hope that, just like Sandra and I just got off vacation, I hope waiting for that vacation and what you were going to see since uh, we went on a cruise and uh, went up to the Northeast and we got to see different cities, in fact, uh, eight different cities in 10 days. Hmm. Is there any anticipation? Is there any excitement? Well, I, I can give you another one. Do you remember growing up as a child? You'd start thinking about Christmas and you thought it would never get there. And now that you're a senior adult or older, it's like it comes faster than you can get ready for it. <laughs> well, there are different ways to feel about this it causes us anxiousness, and the very same thing can cause us excitement. Well, today's lesson should also be that way. Now, in this study, Jesus takes his most important teachings that he's pouring into his disciples on these last few days of his life on earth. In fact, this, according to Mark, is his last teachings before he goes on the cross. Let's look at this. Chapter 13, Mark 13, starting there with verse 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. He will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Well, this section your writer calls, he entitles it, Be Ready. That you and I should be ready for these events. Now, I told you, some people take waiting as, uh, why is it taking so long about Jesus coming back? And others have that anxiousness of hoping to be a part of his coming back. You know, the Christians 
after Jesus' death and then his resurrection, they thought he was coming back any day. And they lived expectantly. And the Bible teaches that is the way you and I should still be living, even though it has been thousands of years, uh, you know, uh, since Jesus died and rose again. We've, we've had 2,000 years pass by and do you still have this anticipation of Jesus returning? I would say for most Christians, it's in our minds, but there's not an anxiousness about it. It's not to the point of where we hate waiting because of like the line at the grocery store or pharmacy or bank. It's also not like if we're going to want to do something, we're waiting to do something as well. We still don't have that same happy anticipation either. I think for most of us, it's just in the back of our minds that it's a possibility. Well, I want you to know that every promise Jesus has made to his disciples have come true. This is the one promise that is not true yet. That's why this anticipation is something that you and I need to have a better handle on. And so this information today is given to us should help us see whether or not we're going to have an excited anticipation or whether or not we're just going to be apathetic toward his return. Which one are you? Well, in verse 26, let's listen to this again as I read it. And what I want you to do is how does Jesus' description of his return differ from his earthly ministry? You know, he, his, he's still here on earth at this time when he, he does this. Listen to verse 26. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Well, remember his earthly ministry? He's very humble. He taught. He did do miracle signs that would point people to a very powerful God and that he was that Messiah. But did people take notice? Some of the crowds followed because they wanted to see more miracles, more power examples. Some followed because they thought they'd get fed or, you know, maybe see some of these things. But for a lot of people, they followed more as this looks like magic tricks. Because a lot of people followed but did not accept Jesus as the Messiah. In fact, we see only a few of the crowds that actually stayed to be disciples. His earthly ministry was of humbleness as a teacher. He traveled around and didn't own anything. But this description of Jesus' return is in power and in glory. It's going to be a spectacle. And when he died on the cross, it was a spectacle, but it was not a powerful one. Died as everyone else died. The spectacle was three days later. Those from the dead differed from anyone who had ever resuscitated. In fact, he was translated. He was given a body that had never existed before. It looked similar to his old body, but it had characteristics of a heavenly body. Just like you and I will be changed and given this new body as well. So let's look at this because this is a totally different way than he lived his life. Very humble, teaching. He you know, taught about the, uh, the sign of God and being the, 
being the Messiah of God, the Son of God, yet it was not in power and in glory. It was one of a humble Messiah, one that was a suffering servant that died for the sins of the whole world. But he's coming back in a quite different way. Now he's coming back in clouds, just like the angels told the disciples that he would return the same way he went up to heaven. He would be coming back in the clouds, which this expresses that very much so. So, what beliefs do you hear expressed about Jesus' return? I mean, how do people... When you talk about that or ever bring it up about Jesus coming back, what what are some of the comments that you get? Probably don't talk about Jesus' return very much, right? Well, even with your Christian friends, if you if you talked about them, about the return, what are some of the things they are saying? You don't talk about Jesus' return with them either, huh? Well, here in the Sunday School lesson, we're going to talk about it. what are some things that people have said about Jesus' return. Well, one, we just don't talk about it very much except in sermons. I'm glad we're taking the Sunday School lesson and talking about it because it's something that needs to be on your heart and mind. In fact, every day you wake up, you need to expect that this may be my last day on earth. Listen to that. It says in those days after that tribulation. Now, I want you to understand, uh, here according to Mark, you and I are possibly going through tribulation. This means troubling times. We're already in troubling times. I hope you can understand that. But after this tribulation, it says, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will be falling from the skies and the powers and the heavens will be shaken. Well, what in the world? There is some kind of cosmic disturbance. And does it mean this could happen literally? Well, it could, but I think it's a figuratively way of saying that something so dramatic is going to happen, it seems to impact everything. All of nature, all of the elements, everything. Something <clears throat> is going to be quite different than you and I have ever, ever seen. And I think that's this description that Jesus is saying. The, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not shed its light. The stars will be falling out of the sky. Not so much literally as it's going to be a cosmic impact like we've never seen before of when Jesus comes back. <laughs> it's going to be dramatic. That's why 26, then they will see. Notice, everyone will see, not just Christians. This is not going to be a secret event with just a few disciples. They will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Well, what is great power and glory? <laughs> Could it be lightning? Yeah. Could it be rainbows? What is great power? Something that's going to be, when you see it, you will know it. That this is the end. This is Jesus coming back like he promised. He's fulfilling that last promise of the return. Mm. Do you think these ideas that other Christians may have about this return uh, compared to what Jesus describes here? Can you imagine his return? What it's going to look like? It says they will all see it. Everyone will know it. It's going to be so dynamic. It has never happened before. <laughs> yeah. Be undescribable almost. 
will be so traumatic as, as though the sun is darkened and the stars start falling out of the sky. It's that dramatic of this return of Jesus. Well, point two here is be aware. Let's look at that in verses 28 through 31. Learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its branch becomes tender and the leaves sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, recognize that he is near at the door. He's at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. There's some deep thinking right there, isn't it? What does your author mean by be aware in this section? Well, what season do you think Jesus is emphasizing here? Notice he says, learn this lesson from the fig tree. And he describes this lesson. When you see a fig tree, notice how he says, its branches become tender and sprout leaves. When you see the fig tree, you know it's past the frost. And when the leaves begin to bud out, the summer is approaching. And that's how you know summer's approaching because fig trees are one of the last trees or bushes, however you want to describe them, that bring forth their leaves in the new year. In the spring, it's if they're a lot later in the spring. Well, they make sure they're past the frost that can occur. So what does he say? Learn this lesson. When you see the branches become tender and the leaves sprout, you know that summer is near. You know it because of the signs. So what we have to learn is what is the signs of Jesus' coming. Notice in verse 29, in the same way when you see these things happening, you will recognize he is near at the door. That term at the door is that um, the introduction is fixing to take place. Will this be? He says, truly, truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away. Remember, he's talking to his disciples and everything. What does it mean by this generation? Because he did not come back while the generation he was talking to, in the way we think of generation, they died without Jesus coming back. A lot of interpreters talk about this generation, talking about the church age, which is, you know, Jesus is yet to die. So he's fixing to die, he's fixing to rise again and begin the church age when the church is born, which will be his presence here on earth. So this generation, a lot of commentators say, talks about this age, this time that we're living in as the last days, the church age. When God institutes the church as the new Israel, that we are to be the missional to go and make disciples, as he said, missional people, and do our job to tell the whole world the gospel story of how Jesus died for our sins, was raised again on the third day, and he's coming back for us. Died for all of our sins so that we may all have a personal relationship with him. And this age, this generation that he's put us in, <clears throat> we, we don't know how long it's going to last. We, we know it's supposed to last until everyone 
has had a chance to hear the gospel story. Hmm. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. God's word is alive. God's words will continue on. Continue on with us, doesn't it? Let's look at this last section. It says, be alert in verses 32 and 37 through 37 because there's something Jesus is going to tell his disciples he wants them to do, do about this because he's, he's already told them Son of Man is going to come back. Second part, he told them about the fig tree that there's going to be some signs of that that you need to be aware of and, and he's told them that now. Now he's going to tell them about these signs. It's be alert. Start looking for these things. And be alert in that I want you to be watching for me and living as though it's your last day. Now that's where you and I may come fall short is we don't live every day as is it our last day. Well, let's look at here and see. Let's find out exactly what he's talking about to us today. Because it says, now concerning that day or hour, no one knows. You know, the disciples were just as curious as you and I to want to know the exact day, the exact time, so that, hey, we don't have to worry about it till it gets here. Because human nature is to put off things until the last but listen to how he tells his disciples. Now concerning that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son. Jesus says, right here on earth, I do not know it. I don't. But only the Father. Only the Father knows the day and the time. Not even Jesus knows the day and the time. So what are we to do? Look at verse 33. Watch, be alert. For you don't know when the time is coming. It is like a man on a journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and gave each one his work and commanded the doorkeeper to be alert. Therefore, be alert, since you don't know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or in the morning. Otherwise, when he comes, suddenly he might find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, be alert. Just be alert. Are we, are we following that command that Jesus gives his disciples today? What could this being alert for Jesus' return look like in, in the life of believers today? What, what should that look like? Can I tell you it should give us a sense of urgency that we should share his gospel message with other people? That's one thing. What is something else to show that we're being alert? Do you think we should be working on our relationship with Jesus Christ by reading his word, by praying, by worshiping him, by studying his word so that we're better prepared to <coughs> share with other people as we get an opportunity? What about our behavior? Should we not be living as though we're fixing to meet our Savior? Should it help us with our attitudes with our kids, our attitudes with our fellow co-workers, our, our actions at work, our actions at home? Would it change some of our habits, <laughs> our hobbies, our actions, if we would think of this as, are we alert 
to stay right here on task. For the end may happen today. How do you see God's wisdom in not revealing when Jesus would return? Now, that is a great discussion question for your class. As they sit around and look at how do you see God's wisdom in this, in that he doesn't reveal to anyone, not even his son, when Jesus would return. It is... When you know the end, you may put things off because you say it's a long way off. But do we know it's a long way off? Are we promised a long time? No, we're not. In fact, at other places throughout the Bible, especially here in the New Testament, it talks about this: how quick and swift time will be. It also tells us in, in 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, uh, uh, about those who sleep in Christ, that the dead in Christ will rise first. So didn't want you to leave you uninformed about what happens to those who do die, who were waiting for his return. They will rise first with us, and we will meet him in the air. Goodness. You don't know the day or the hour. How are you living your life today? One, live your life as though it's your last day on earth. What would you do differently if you knew for certain this was your last day? Is there someone you would want to tell about Jesus? Is there someone you want to tell them you love them now and want the best for them now for Jesus would come in this great power and demonstration of glory that he's going to be coming into? When then no other decision can be made. It is the end when this return happens. Wow. Be ready. Be aware that it's coming quickly and be alert so that you and I need to stay on task. Why? He's given us a command. Go make disciples, teaching them all things that Jesus taught us. That means you got a lot to learn by reading the Bible, studying it, practicing going to church, mm -hmm. a lot of things to, to get in your repertoire and then, what are we supposed to do with that? Go make disciples, teach them all things, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age, the church age. Coming back. Then no more decisions can be made. It is judgment. <laughs> well, are you living like this is the last day? I hope that it would change your mind by listening to this Sunday school lesson today, that you'd make it a priority. Yeah, you can plan for a future. There's no problem with that. You can plan for, uh, you know, preparing for your future of retirement or, you know, your occupation or going to college. If you're a younger person listening to this uh, today, you know, all those preparations, you prepare uh, like it's going to be a long time, but you live like it's your last day. <laughs> How do you do that? Takes a lot of work, doesn't it? You and I who have had this expectation, you and I have been living a long time with this. And we continue to live each day as it's our last. Well, I told you that I have a party, and sometimes you get to join me. So I'm so glad 
you were able to join me this morning for my party as I shared this information with you to live up to what Jesus Christ has taught us and share that message with people who God puts into your path, into your presence, whether you're waiting on at a line, whether you have kids or grandkids, pour into them all that you know about God and how much he loves you and them, that they may come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Live each day as though it's your last, and expect Jesus to come any moment. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for this information that Jesus taught his disciples right before he would head to the cross. It's the same thing you and I need to hear, that there is an end coming, and we are going to be a part of it. Father, help us to live each day you've given to us. We don't know our expiration date. Only you know when we are born and when we die and the type of life that we will live based on our faith in you. Father, help us to live out that faith. Help us to feel the urgency in our life, to be ready to share the gospel at any moment's notice, to love you continually and to live a life uh, as we are learning how Jesus lived, to live that same humble life, sharing the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. Bless us as we continue to serve together that your name may be glorified in our gracious name. Amen. Well, have a great week.